Hi, I'm Ken. I'm out here in Western Massachusetts visiting Hancock Shaker Village. Uh, just happened to come by. It's a really lovely place. Uh, I'll talk more about the Shakers in a minute. Uh, today I'm here and happen chance to see a first day cover release of the Hancock Village, uh, the Shaker stamps that are coming out today. So that's a fortunate, happy accident. The Shakers were, actually still are, a Christian sect formed in the late 18th century. They were known as Shakers because of their charismatic worship style. The term Shakers was originally a slur, but the group adopted the name for themselves early on. The Shakers aimed for a simple life, living communally and espousing ideas like gender equality, pacifism, and celibacy. You may know them through their Shaker boxes or Shaker furniture styles. The images on these stamps highlight Shaker design. These are, in fact, the stamps that were released during our visit. Notice the simple lines in the architecture, furniture, and famous shaker boxes highlighted on these stamps. Today it appears there are just three remaining members living in Maine's Sabbath Day Lake Shaker Village. The shakers thrived in the 19th century with as many as 6,000 members at their peak. People often came to the shaker community as poor or orphaned children, deciding whether to stay with the community when they became adults. Due in large part to their philosophy of celibacy, their membership has dwindled over time to the two or three that remain today. The Hancock Shaker Village, like many Shaker communities, is now a museum. The village gives glimpses of what life was like in the community. You can walk through the various gardens, barns, community buildings, living quarters, and workshops. In this room, a volunteer was demonstrating how the Shakers made their beautiful boxes. This building is a round stone barn, the centerpiece of the museum. As we get closer, you see the people gathered around at the end of the stamp release ceremony. We were a little late for the ceremony itself, but my wife was able to get this picture of me in front of the display print of the stamps. I'm a little bit fascinated by the effort the post office puts into these ceremonies. There was this print of the stamps. It's the kind of thing I think a collector would love to hang in their home. Inside the big circular barn, the post office set up tables to sell the new stamps and cancel them with the special first day issue cancel. As we walked in, we first came to this sign. It's generic enough, but standing in front of this sign was a greeter who gave us these envelopes and pins. Notice that the pin is of one of the stamps of the released sheet, and the envelope is a first day cover in its own right. Notice also that the cancel on the stamp is from a custom rubber stamp for the event, another expense. This is what was inside the envelope. I've seen other first day ceremony programs like this. This is less of a program than a map of the museum. There's also a little scavenger hunt tucked into the program. The program uses really high quality printing. We had to wait in line to buy our stamps and get them canceled. The line filed past these enlarged images of the stamps. They look lovely framed next to the windows of this shaker barn. Again, these are the kinds of things that any collector would love to get a hold of. Really nice printing quality. I hope that the village got to keep these prints. It's amazing the amount of effort that the post office put into this one stamp release. Multiple prints of the stamp, plus signage for the event, a high quality program inside of a first day cover, at least four post office employees supporting the event, the custom cancellation, and the nice stamp pins. Of course, they were selling the stamps, and many of them were canceled at the event, so I guess they got their money without having to send anything through the mail. Anyway, the post office spent a lot on the event. I think they do the same thing with every stamp release. It's really quite remarkable. Maybe it's a break-even proposition, it's hard to tell. They did impress me with all the effort they put into this. Well done, USPS. I got this pin. My wife got one too, both free. When we were leaving, we found the third one on the ground in the parking lot. I'm going to keep this unwrapped one, but now I have two others to give away. The first two people to claim them in the comments can have them. I'm sorry, I think I have to limit this to the US since these things have a thickness to them. That's going to make them a package rather than a letter. Sorry about that. The line wasn't that long. I think we were 15 to 20 people from the front, but it moved kind of slowly. The barn was hot and my wife was patient. I've got a good wife. There were two people selling the stamps. You could get sheets of the stamps or a set of 12 envelopes with one of the stamps already canceled with either the same cancel that was on the program envelope or a special multicolored cancel. Sorry, I don't have an image of that one. 
They also had a framed image of the stamp you could buy, but apparently they only had four of those available and they sold out straight away. The reason the line moved so slowly is that after you bought your stamps, you could get them date canceled. This nice guy was the only one doing this job. Most people in line got the 12 pack of stamps on envelopes. He stamped each envelope with the care you would take if you were doing it for yourself. 12 careful cancellations per customer takes a long time. I didn't get the 12 first day covers. I don't collect first day covers, but I did want a souvenir of the event. Instead, I got two copies of the sheet of stamps. The first one is from my souvenir sheet collection. In another video, I talked about trying to decide what's a souvenir sheet and what's just a sheet of stamps. No matter, I'll treat this sheet as a souvenir of the event. I had the second copy canceled with the first day cancellation. The guy was nice enough to cancel all the stamps, four cancels to cover the whole sheet. He offered to add the special event cancel to the sheet too. I think it came out great. We're gonna frame this copy as a memory of the day. It took a while to get through the hotline, but I'm glad we waited. After we were done, we took some time to walk through the museum grounds. Here's a few images from our visit. Well, here I am back from Hancock Shaker Village. Uh, we have just been wrapping up a vacation on this beautiful lake here in Western Massachusetts. Uh, it was a lot of fun to see the Hancock Shaker Village. If you're out in this area, I'd encourage you to take a visit there. Uh, seeing a first day cover ceremony and picking up a first day cover uh, fortuitously was really a, a, a pleasure. It's the first one I've ever seen. Uh, I don't think I'll be going to others. I don't collect first day covers, but you know, it was fun to see one in real life. Uh, I hope you all have uh, fun on whatever summer vacations, summer plans you have. Uh, I can't recommend sitting on a lake for a couple weeks anymore. So anyway, have a lovely summer. Uh, we'll uh, talk soon.